convent of sinners is the story of Susanna, a young girl who is assaulted by her own father and sent to a convent for her sins, where she falls in love with her priest. The other nuns, however, are jealous and angry. They want Susanna for themselves and accuse her of being possessed by the devil. This film isn't that holy grail either. It's a slightly more professionally done than the majority of its ilk and may even appeal to those who don't watch films just see naked women and random sleaze. Jodi Ameto's name is synonymous with sleaze and nudity. And so it's rather odd that this film appear to focus more on character and the implication of the plot rather than God-fearing women stripping off for one another. Jodi Ameto, the director of my favorite non-exploitation film so far, the completely over-the-top images in a convent doesn't give this film the same handling. But once again, Sleaze makes up the backbone. After being harassed by her own father, a young woman named Suzanne is sent off to a convent for her sins. Naturally, she isn't very pleased about this chain of event. And it's not long before she wants to forsake her vows and leave the convent. Only her fellow nuns are none to please and argue that she has become possessed by the devil. The film does feature several nude scenes, although there isn't anything too bad in this film. One scene which sees the central character have holy water force through a certain orifice is liable to offend and please fans of this sort of film however it's clear that the film was made on a low budget although the talent and the amato mask this brilliantly with some crisp and clear cinematography and a lack of sequences that may show his budget restrained the central story is actually well used, although personally I found it a little too dry as I really don't have much of an interest in the way that convent are run and the method they use to keep their personal in check. Diameto seemed to have wanted to make the film a bit more deep than the usual non-exploitation and this is shown by the way that the central character is made out to be a martyr, almost in the style of the like of John of Arc, as she wrongly becomes the victim of sins she hasn't committed. Overall, I won't say that I am a big fan of this film, but of the few non exploitation films I have watched, this certainly isn't the worst. Aristide Massa Chessy. The undisputed king of Italian exploitation movies, he accredited as Dario Donati did it again. After his infamous vision in a convent, an erotic rom starring sultry Paola Senato and totally uninhibited Marina Headman, comes back several years later with his second entry in the convent erotica or non-exploitation sub-genre. Actually in this one, he makes an honest effort to improve the quality of this production and he almost succeed. Still a low budget production but with great renaissance setting, excellent cinematography, an attractive cast led by a gorgeous young Eva Grimaldi, decent acting and a clever and quiet exploitative direction. As a matter of fact, even if less explicit and graphic, 
than its predecessor. We get here the whole Sleaz enchilada containing more than obligatory nuns lesbian action. Nuns frolicking in bathtub. A hunky handman who is mute but compensate his handicap by being available to comfort and service needy nuns. And the most incredible and unthinkable exorcism practice involving holy water and an enema syringe. All the nuns are young and pretty. And you really wonder if to become a nun in those days girls had to meet very high beauty parameter. The story is quite the classic one. A young girl, Suzanne, is assaulted by her stepfather and consequently sent to a convent to get her out of the way. There she finds soon that life behind the convent walls can be quite exciting. She has a steamy sensual relationship with Mother Superior, a sorted lesbian encounter with other nun, and a sacrilegious love relationship with the young father confessor of the convent. This, however, unchained the jealousy and angriness of the other nun, led by the wise Mother Superior who has planned for Suzanne. Repeatedly rejected, she accuses her of being possessed by the devil and managed to send her to trial before the archbishop. Suzanne get torture and exercise. She still proclaims her love for God, but also confesses a lack of religious vocation which made her vulnerable to the temptation of the flesh. Unable to prove her innocence abandoned by her lover and rejected by the vast majority of the sisterhood, she flips out, get into the convulsions, tears open her robe and naked, drops unconscious on the floor of the church. Highly dramatic organ music, rolling closing credit. Why have those non-exploitation or convent erotica flicks become so popular during the 70s and 80s and in several cases so successful? Like to recommend very stylish and stimulating Valorant Barabsic behind the convent wall and both equally excellent Domenico Paolella's The Nun of Saint Archangel and Story of Cloistered Nun. And it goes without saying, the one who started the whole genre, Telerius can wrestle the devil. I think mainly for the anti-clerical spirit which started spreading during the 70s, showing the church, the cloister, the inquisition and similar institution as very corrupt and barbaric. But not only for this reason. They also depict a microcosm in which young women are prisoners confined in limited space where the most evil and powerful can sadistically abuse the weakest and the most innocent. I believe the majority of male readers will agree that the half-naked body of a nun who implies purity since she is supposed to deny her body and all her love desire, becomes a power's object of desire. If the very same body undergoes whipping or any other act of abuse, it tremendously increases its erotic appeal. A love act like fondling or masturbation performed on screen by a beautiful actress impersonating a nun in various stages of undressing of her rough underwear alone or with a partner set in a cloister becomes an almost unbeatable element for high voltage and kinky eroticism. Desire for sacrilegious profanation of a symbol of purity 
expression of a macho culture originated love and hate relationship towards women desire of revenge for a symbol of forbidden unnatural and inaccessible femininity i don't think i go wrong if i say a mixture so if you enjoy watching convent of sinners but at the end of the movie felt a sudden urge to take a shower it's okay go ahead and you will feel better afterward i give this one a 7 out of 10 despite their obvious exploitation potential the non exploitation films actually started out as more or less serious and even somewhat historically accurate dramas criticizing the church the original film that started it all the nun of monza is in this vein as is the early 70s loose trilogy of italian nun films story of a cloister nun the nuns of saint archangel and the sinful nuns of saint valentine and also perhaps the best of all of these films flavia the heretic the mid 70s though so the influence of the exorcist and these films began to delve into not so historically accurate satanic themes and completely over the top hallucinatory delirium typified by jess franco's love letter from a portuguese nun the two mexican nun films satanic pandemonium and alucarda not to mention the rather incoherent films of hack bruno matti the other hell and the true story of the nun of monza then there were the flat out almost completely plotless lesbian romp like valerian barabsis behind convent wall as well as just plain weird stuff like the jalo hybrid killer nun Sleaze master Jody Ameto had earlier directed images in a convent which managed to combine the latter two strains so it's interesting here he decided to go all the way back to the beginning and make a fairly historical drama based on a novel by Danny Didero no less The story involves a young girl who is confined to a convent after her last full father tried to assault her. She becomes a favorite of the mother superior and a potential lover of the young father confessor. But falls prey to the machination of another ambitious nun who is plotting to take over the convent. The supporting cast meanwhile include Gabriel Tinti as the Monsignor and Jessica Mu. There is nudity a plenty courtesy of Vale, Mu and Grimaldi. But the Amato seems uncharacteristically much more interested in serious drama than softcore film. The problem is with the exception of the underrated Tinti The Amato is saddled here with softcore star cast who don't pull off serious drama very well. Grimaldi is especially unconvincing as an innocent virgin. The role perhaps should have been played by Jessica Mu, but she was not really a great actress either. That's not to say this movie is in any way bad. But it is odd that the Amato would go so much in the way of serious drama with this cast who were really built for a flat out love romp. Non exploitation flick from director Jody Amato is actually very tame for the genre. And instead of nothing but love, the film goes for drama and protest against the Catholic Church. After being assaulted by her father A young girl is sent to a convent where she become very close with the head nun. Soon the other nun get jealous and decide to tell the higher up 
that the girl is possessed by the devil running just under 90 minutes the film does drag in spot but the amato message against the church is loud and very clear most of this non exploitation film are nothing but lesbian but that too is rather small in this film as it's clear the director is going for something deeper the camera work is very good and the lead do a nice job as well